This is the Sony ZV-E10, and this camera came out about two years ago, and it was highly regarded as one of the best Sony cameras for content creators. Since its release, however, quite a few new cameras have come out, so is the ZV-E10 still worth it in 2024? Let's talk about it. So before we dive into if this camera is worth it, let's talk about who would even buy this camera to begin with. This camera, when it came out, was targeted towards content creators. And because you could put different lenses on it, it was kind of regarded as a stepping stone camera for somebody who wanted a camera to create content, but could possibly look to upgrade to better gear in the future because you'd be able to keep lenses that are still relevant. However, this does look ridiculous. But now, if we switch to this camera, the camera itself is still very good. And if you're wanting to just make content, this camera still shoots 4K. It's easily pocketable. I don't think you can really go wrong with this. The truth is, even though this camera is a bit older and it's super small and it looks like a toy, I've used this on several professional shoots. This is every bit of a workhorse as it was the day it came out. And if you're just doing something like this where you're capturing content of yourself, this is gonna be everything you need. So although the ZV-E10 did come out about two years ago, it's still more than enough for 95% of people out there. If you look on Facebook Marketplace and eBay, you could probably pick one up used for a very good price. But since it's release, Canon has released the EOS R50 and the EOS R100, which both directly compete with this camera, both shoot 4K, and let's not forget to mention, they have a viewfinder. You see, although Canon does have the newer crop sensor lenses, they don't have third-party lens support. So buying lenses from Canon for the camera can get extremely expensive. However, when it comes to Sony, the E-mount has been out for a while now, and there's tons of third-party support allowing you to get better lenses for less money. The Sigma 1.4 Trio is a prime example. You could get those three lenses and cover pretty much anything you needed and it's gonna look insanely good. Not to mention all the features this camera does still give you. You get a nice flip out screen, you get a decent onboard microphone, and this camera has a lot of good assist features built in. So for someone who doesn't necessarily wanna be a filmmaker, but they still wanna have the blurry background, this camera will do it for you very easily. And for someone who is a pro, this could be a great travel camera as well as a B camera because you get a lot of the same internals that you do in the A6400. In fact, even though I have technically better cameras, I find myself using this one a lot just because it's so convenient to carry around and it gives me something dedicated outside of my iPhone. And if you decide to film your video vertically, the video in this camera automatically adjusts to a vertical position. I actually use this for quite a bit of vertical content. So is the ZV-E10 still relevant in 2024? Absolutely. In fact, the only thing I wouldn't recommend using this for is if you're filming video for clients to deliver to them. Not because this isn't good enough, but if you show up with this camera, they might give you a weird look. But if you're making online content and you're trying to build a personal brand or you're trying to boost the exposure of your business or you're trying to make a vlog, document your life, or even if you just need a really good webcam for Zoom calls, this camera is everything you need. Anyways, if you've enjoyed this video, leave a like. It really does help push this video to more people. Subscribe if you wanna see more content like this and leave a comment down below if you have any questions or if you plan on grabbing the ZV-E10 for yourself. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.